if you use React with Vite and you want to unit test your application. I can objectively say that for the time being, as of August of 2024, Vtest is a better option than Jest. In terms of performance, while maintaining a very similar developer interface that we have been accustomed to with Jest in the past, therefore making the learning curve easier. Things move quickly in the JavaScript ecosystem. I've recently noticed that the official documentation for Vtest with React and TypeScript setup is a bit out of date, along with video tutorials that are available in the public domain. So in this video, I will quickly show you how to set up Vtest for your React with Vite using TypeScript applications. We will run a couple of unit tests to make sure everything is working. If you need a more comprehensive setup, I will refer you to the official Vtest documenta documentation and their GitHub page. First, let's start with installing NPM packages as development dependencies. We will need Vtest itself, of course, JS DOM for interacting with the DOM during our unit test because we are doing browser application development. Now, the testing library that you see there, the testing library was recommended in the legacy official React documentation as well as the current official React documentation. The testing library will help Vtest facilitate and run our unit tests, and the two work very well together. Out of the core testing library, we will need the one that is specific to React itself, itself and this user event portion from the core testing library is so that we can test user events such as button clicks and what have you. And finally, we will need just DOM from the testing library. We are obviously not using just anymore, but we need this package because we want to use the same APIs and syntax that were available with Jest because they were so good. And we combine that with Vtest and we have a winning combination. Now let's work on setting the configuration object for our Vtest. There are two ways that we can go about doing this. One option is to create a vtest.config.ts file at the root of our project directory and set our configuration object in here. But I would advise against doing this unless you have a very specific need for it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So the beauty of using Vtest with Vite is that since we are already using Vite with our React application, we can add our Vtest configuration in here. On line one and two of this file, I've added the reference type for Vtest in Vtest client and then the triple slash. If you're not familiar with the triple, triple slash, it is telling this file that I am importing types from another file in the module. Next, inside of the define config object, please create a test property. Now, before we continue, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything at all, and it will help me grow this channel in order to help 
developers like yourselves. Thank you. So directing your attention to line number 11, the first key value pair in the test object, I have the global set to true because by default, VTest does not provide global APIs to help improve uh, explicitness and performance. But if you want familiar syntax with Chess, if you use Chess before and you want to use the same API that Chess has in the same syntax, set this global value to true, or set a global property to true as this value. And when you do that, we need to do something else in the TypeScript configuration. So with the latest version of Vt, the TypeScript configuration has changed. We now actually have three TypeScript configuration file. And it's directing the path to app and node. App is the front end of the application, and node is the Node.js, um, referring to the node server underlying uh, Vt. Just like in Webpack, Vite is both a bundler and um, a development web server, among other things, right? And so what I did was for dsconfig.app, I went ahead and added types vtest globals, as you can see there on line 24, inside of the compiler option object, okay? And I did the same, just for good measure, I did the same thing for tsconfig.node, uh, just in case. And I have also, for both files, for node and app.json file, in the include on line 26, in the include array, I've added the uh, vtest.setup.ts file inside of the source directory. Okay, it has to be, as far as I know, it has to be inside of the source directory. Now, with the vtest setup um, file naming convention, I went with the dot syntax. Now, you can use um, camel casing here if you want, but I prefer the dot syntax because it's easier for me to glob it, to use a glob pattern. Um, uh, if I have to, and what I mean by that, by glob, is, is glob, G-L-O-B, okay? Um, so go ahead and add that. Then going back to here, the environment, of course, the environment, the testing environment, of course, is the JS DOM environment, where we are interacting and testing DOM element because we're testing a web application, like I mentioned earlier. The setup file I mentioned just a, minute, a second ago, um, we're going to look at this file in, in, in a second. It's very simple. I want to test CSS as well. And then I want the test to run for five seconds. Now, if your uh, test is bog up somehow due to complexity, then let it run for five seconds before you give up. Now, for the reporters, which is how much output when something fell how much output do you want in the terminal if you're running the test in terminal or in the browser now i went with verbose because you know we're starting out i want as much information as possible and then later on if I, if I don't need info i can change that and here are your options right you have basic blob uh, dot etc etc but like I said, by default, I want to start out with verbose because I know what's going on. If it turned out to be TMI, then I can do something about that. In my case, in the vtest.setup file, again, that lives inside the source directory, I am importing the necessary um, packages here. That's probably the most important part that I'm doing here. And then beyond that, I am just cleaning up the test after each run just to free up some memory. And that's about it for my vtest.setup file. Now, this is a nuanced thing. In your vtest.setup file, um, it, might be, it might look something else, but this is the minimum that you would need. 
So going back to the package.json file, let's go ahead and set up our run script for testing. So on line 11, I have the command, the npm command to run vtest itself. On line number 12, I have the vtest watcher, which we can be helpful during development when we're developing the test and when we're writing code. And then finally on line 13, uh, I have the vtest UI, which will run the test in the browser as opposed to the terminal. And when I say the terminal, it can either be the terminal in VS Code and, or the terminal, uh, your, uh, your Mac terminal or your Linux terminal or your, whatever terminal you use in Windows, heaven forbid. Um, by the way, in case you don't know, in VS Code, you can have multiple instances of your G's terminal. So off screen, I wrote two unit tests, one to, a very simple unit test. One is to test the, the app um, file, just to make sure that certain, certain texts are in the document when it renders. And as you can see here, the syntax is very similar to Jest. So the learning curve is going to be very, very easy. Uh, I also wrote a unit test for uh, my reducer, my uh, score reducer here, as you can see. And my preference is to use the test, the dot test um, syntax in the test file. You can also use spec, but this is a unit test, so I, therefore I call it test. And I also like to create the tests where the actual file lives so that you can go back and forth. Some people like to create a separate test uh, folder to live outside of the actual files, but it's up to you. So then let's go ahead and run this test in the terminal. Let's go ahead and just run the npm test. Again, you can do the watcher as well. You can do, uh, you can have the watch flag if you like to have the watch. And as you can see here, um, both tests are passing, of course, but let me go ahead and change something here. Let's just say game of thrones. God. Season eight was horrible. Obviously it fell and I'm gonna reverse revert that uh, to make sure. It's gonna pass again. Okay. Now it's just as it, this is referring to this specific test here, obviously, right? As you can see there. And let's go ahead and do something wrong in here to make sure everything is working properly. Um, let's just say, you know. Eight. Save. Up. Oh, it fails. Revert. Save. It passes again. We can also run these unit tests in the UI. As you can see here, I've created an alias command for vtest with the UI flag. Let's go ahead and run that. And then when you run that, a browser will pop up and it'll look something like this, okay? And then you can do things in this browser as well, but we're running the test. And you can leave this open if you like, and of course you can change the theme. <laughs> Refer to documentation for further configuration of this if you like. Like I've said at the beginning of this video, the JavaScript ecosystem moves very quickly. And as of August 15th of 2024, um, the setup, this is how you set up vtest with Vite and React and TypeScript. However, six months from now, something might change. So uh, the best thing to do is first check the documentation and then experiment, experiment, experiment. And of course, you can always have the option of watching my channel and I'll help you along. Okay, so again, please consider subscribing. Um, I don't sell anything, it doesn't cost anything. I just, I'm just here to help people, that's it, okay? Thanks for watching, see you next time.